Hi, Gary Korb here for CigarAdvisor.com and we are doing a video review on the Four Kicks Black Belt Buckle. It's from Crowned Heads and I'm sitting here with my uh, co-leagues, John, <laughs> my co-leagues, <laughs> John DeTore and Tommy Zeman. So anyway, what we have here is the, I guess you call it the sequel to the original four kicks blend from Crown Heads. It's called Black Belt Buckle. I'll tell you about the name in a minute. It is a Corona Gorda. It is only available right now in one size, which is the five and five eighths by 46. It's a limited edition. Only 1,000 boxes were made. Their boxes are 10. So we have, what, 10,000 cigars yep. totally. So you better get them fast. Uh, the blend is medium full. It is a Nicaraguan filler and binder. And it's, a, of course, a mix of different Nicaraguan tobaccos from different parts of Nicaragua. And the wrapper, which is different from the original Four Kicks, is a Connecticut Broadleaf Maduro. And I got to tell you, I had one yesterday, and it really adds a lot of sweetness and body to this cigar. It's also made by Ernesto Perez Carillo in the Dominican Republic. Does size matter? This is a Corona Gorda. Yep. I don't usually smoke the size. I think size does matter when uh, you're blending cigars. Really, when when uh, manufacturers are creating a cigar, they, they try to blend it in a Robusto or a Toro size. Um, and that's just so when when they have to mix up the proportions a little bit, they, it's easy to go to a Churchill, and it's easy to go to a short Robusto, or it's easy to go to a Corona or, or something like that without changing the flavor much. But really, uh, size is all about proportion. So with this, uh, since it's a thinner cigar, you have a lot more of the uh, wrapper tobacco that's influencing the flavor that's true. A, a ton. And the Connecticut Broadleaf Maduro, I mean, it's sweet. It's very rich. It's 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 got a it's got a ton of flavor behind it, and it's really coming through with this cigar. So yes, I believe in this case, size really does matter, and uh, it's influencing the flavor of the cigar very much. Well, Tommy, I never had this cigar yet. You guys have tried it beforehand. I didn't. Uh, first of all, Connecticut Broadleaf Maduro has always been maybe my favorite wrapper. I don't know. I just love the the look, the feel. It's very toothy. It's very yeah. right. It's very raw. thick, toothy, raw, but. It always has really bold, like you said, like a sweetness to it. Uh, interesting about maybe the, an inch down the cigar, I'm kind of getting uh, very charry, kind of almost like a, a charred wood, like, you know, almost like that barrel wood, almost if you mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. burn it or threw it into a grill or something. And it's very interesting. I think maybe you gotta like that kind of flavor, and I really do, but again, it's early in the morning here. Mm. We're like, I say early, 10 o'clock. So normally you don't smoke a cigar like this at 10 in the morning, or most people don't. And it's extremely full-bodied to me, even though you said medium to full, but I think it's because mm -hmm. it's morning. But yeah. uh, this thing has a lot of flavor right off the bat. It's, uh, it's kind of reminiscent of almost what Drew Estate has done with some of the, you know, not quite as mesquite type as the mm -hmm. uh, uh, Nica Rustica and that stuff, but... Right. Uh, it's kind of like the... Uh, it's kind of like the... Um, the Kentucky Fire Cure. Kind of like right? that. That's Only what I without the Fire Cure tobacco. Yes, but not as kind of raw as those. It's still right. a little more a fine taste. Though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I like uh, the, the, the sweet aspect to it, mm. uh, you know, because I kind of like sweet cigars. And this Maduro wrapper, uh, and maybe this is why they're only able to make uh, a thousand boxes, is probably a pretty good harvest. And oh, yeah. I have the feeling that that's why they only wanted to make so many, because that's all they got, oh, yeah. at least for now. So um, I think that the body is, even though it's been described as medium, it's definitely more full. And the one I had yesterday, it tends to have a lot more uh, body and depth to it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you, it's fair to compare it to the original four kicks, but I, I, I kind of, you know, in all fairness, I like this taste better. I just think, like the sweeter taste. Do you think you find that smoke has like a super heavy mouthfeel? It's yeah. Like really? smoke in the aroma the aroma hits hard you know what this could be a good question for a Jose Blanco type who seems to know all these yeah. things but you may touch on what what causes a cigar to have a thicker smoke thicker mouthfeel than another cigar do you real do we really know what causes that 
I think maybe it has to do with flavor, right? Is well, it the tobacco itself? Is it the blend? Is it probably it a little bit It could be a bit, bit, a bit combination of everything, even the way it's rolled, you know? Right. And uh, well, also, uh, I will tell you about the cigar. It has a very, very good firm ash on it. Yeah. And I think I had a... Uh, Every uh, review know, video I, you do that, Joe? I'll, t I'll tell you a story. This is true. I was smoking this last night, and... I really didn't want to put it down because I'd only gotten about three quarters of the way through it. So I, I took it in the car and I opened the roof of the car and I was uh, you know, driving down the road and I see that the ash is starting to get, you know, like it's getting long. So I took the cigar and I stuck it up through the roof of the car. I was doing about 35 miles and an hour, break. and it did not break. That that's, a, that's a really it did not, it three times. Actually, I've done that, and that's actually a really good sign of a well-made cigar. <laughs> I couldn't it believe really it. Really is. It's so, called the car test. So yeah, finally, I was banging my wrist but, against uh, the roof. Also, and got it when you uh, when you get a mm -hmm. thick ash like that, when you tap it, it'll come off in one nice solid. Chunk. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, so the point Gary's making is extremely well-made, very yeah, yeah. well rolled. Well, it really is. This is like. A well-packed little, yeah. little forty-six sticky. One more note on the wrapper. If you look at it, doesn't it remind you of like a Toscano or like a Parodi? Just the, well, just the look of it because you know it what? is so raw and so Con rugged. Um, Connecticut Broly Maduro is often that way. It's, it's mm -hmm. you know, there's yeah. been some really great cigars of the past made in that that always, and even a lot of times you might find a vein or two, and it doesn't yeah. matter. It just kind of adds to yeah. the whole. When we're talking about wrappers, especially this kind of wrapper, these aren't shade grown, these are sun grown. So it's gonna be heftier, it's gonna be thicker, it's gonna be more veiny. So you, but it also is gonna have a lot more flavor. So really, this is a testament to how flavorful it really will be, this wrapper. So these leaves, Gary, gotta be kind of more towards the top, soaking up tons yeah. of sunlight, Fine. right? Mm -hmm. Tons, they're thick leaves, they're big leaves, mm -hmm. they're very thick. Right. right. Um, and, uh, and for those of you that don't know, the higher the tobacco is on the uh, tobacco plant, the more flavorful, the more strong it, it, it really is. Because of the, the more sunlight. Because of more sunlight. It's, it's just a, something that happens naturally. More flavor, more strength, everything. And the lower you get is the least strength, it's not as dark, it, you know, all that. Notice here is that Tommy is not drinking anything with his cigar. Nope. I have some coffee and Jonathan is drinking water and I think that will definitely affect the way we perceive this cigar as yeah, well. Absolutely. I'm getting this kind of sweetness, this woodiness, earthiness, uh, and a little bit of that coffee espresso thing, which, which I kind of got last night. So I will say that it is consistent. Tommy? Well, yeah, definitely not having um, anything to drink and being 10 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> I'm getting the full on effect of the cigar. Um, and I like it very much because it's giving me the real flavor to it. Mm -hmm. I think, though, this is the kind of cigar I would not smoke in the morning. I would smoke this at night after a yeah. good meal. I mean, I think if you have this with a steak, a burger, uh, you know, ribs, chili, anything like that, with a good beer, craft beer agree, or something, yeah. even a red wine, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, like a, uh, not a sweet red wine. Yeah, like no, no, like a, a hearty red wine. Red wine. Yeah. This would hold up so well after a good meal. Oh, yeah. This would almost be like a dessert cigar because as you get down to where I am now on it, now you, this is starting to open up and it's not as charry. It's more like I'm getting like dark plums almost, like that really? kind of hint of, yeah, like a sweetness. Hmm. Not super sweet, just a little bit of that just, kind of just tough. flavor on the back of the palate. I like the cigar a lot. You guys yeah. like it? I like yeah. it a lot. I, I'd say it's it's kind of what I call a perfect cigar because it's burning perfectly, it's well made, yeah. it tastes great, it's well balanced. You know, I just I can't say much more about it other than that it's uh, definitely something yeah. that you're going to want to try. And they are made in limited edition, so you want to get in on it soon, that's for sure. Why is it called a belt buckle? It's called, oh, the belt buckle. It's called the black belt so. buckle because uh, John Huber is, I guess, a fan of Kings of Leon and he loves his song Four Kicks. And, Black, black belt buckle is part of the lyrics. Oh, really? Four okay. kicks. So it's also interesting that the first cigar was just called Four Kicks, and then the follow-up is called Black Belt Buckle, which are lyrics that are part of the Ricky. song. Okay. So anyway, I, I don't know how it goes. Okay. Black belt buckle. You know, That's probably like not that. how it goes. <laughs> wow. I I'm not <laughs> Can a I make up a fan. song about your nice firm ass? <laughs> all right, John, what are you getting in the flavors? Now, uh, Gary pointed out that we're, we're all experiencing the cigar a little bit differently because Tommy's doing it dry, Gary's got the coffee, and I have water. I, I have to point out, it, it's very interesting that, we're, that we are doing this very separately, to be honest, and it does influence flavor a lot. Um, Tommy's getting one thing, Gary's getting more of a coffee flavor because he is drinking coffee, 
and coffee, especially with the cream that he's got in it, coats the palate a little bit more and, and keeps mm -hmm. those flavors around. Now, water, I, I never really advocate drinking water with a cigar. It's just something. And I always do. Oh, no, I, I, no, I, I, I always agree. do. I never advocate drinking water with a cigar That's because real. in between puffs, it, it's a lot of testers, a lot of manufacturers, when they're testing out a cigar, they never drink water because it washes the palate in between puffs. And then okay. that cuts down on the complexity of the cigar. So really, every puff that you get is like you're taking the first puff of a cigar because it's just washing your palate. Now, because I'm doing that, I'm not getting a ton of. Com <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm not getting a ton of complexity I, I, out of the cigar as I normally would. Now I have smoked the cigar before without any drink or anything, so I I know what Tommy's experiencing. But this is very. It's staying ashy. I have a little bit of sweetness, so it's staying pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, just because I I am drinking it with water. But if you drink it without water, or if you drink it with coffee, you're going to get an explosion of flavor. Well, let me say something. Uh, John Pulo, who's not here today, we were smoking it together last night, and he said something that I thought was interesting. He said it's not so much complex as it is diverse. And I thought that was an interesting observation. I think sense. it is diverse because yeah, it sense. started out for me, like I said, smoky, oak, charry, mm -hmm. and went yeah. and into, like I said, almost a sweet, dark plum. And so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, there's diversity in the flavors. There. Okay, so there we go. We so, want to wrap it up. Yeah, any final like thoughts? It? Yeah, John, oh, you like it? Yeah, definitely great like it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah it's a solid. The solid. So anyway, that is it for the four kicks black belt buckle. Thanks again to John Huber and the folks at Crown Heads for providing those cigars for us. And mm -hmm. don't forget to follow us on Facebook and read Cigar Advisor Magazine at CigarAdvisor.com. Thanks again to Jonathan DeTorek, Tommy Z-Man, and we'll see you next time.